Uh, shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory be to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakha Kodash. And I want to say double honors to the apostles and the elders, great millstone of all well. Blessings to the hopeful elect out there listening and learning, teaching this word also in sincerity and truth, in the hopes that we may edify and feed the lambs of Yahweh Shai, especially in these last days. Now, I didn't uh, have uh, a whole bunch of precepts lined up. You know, for this particular lesson, I was just going to hit it to the point. Um, in There's a scripture that I just came across in Surah 26th chapter. Um, and from verse 4, which I'm going to go into right now. All right. It says, whether a man be rich or poor. If he have a good heart toward the Lord, he shall at all times rejoice with a cheerful countenance. You understanding what that's talking about? No matter what situation that you're facing, whether it's financial, woes, economic woes, economic turbulence, um, physical ailments that you're going through, met people messing with you, your job not paying you right, I don't know, your children right, you know, rising up against you, a man's foes shall be there of his own household, uh, your woman's against you. Anyone outside of this truth, the scriptures, if you're applying the understanding of the scriptures, you should have a clear understanding that Satan can use anything and anyone around you that's not in this truth to fuck with you and as you're being fucked with if the Lord allows that to happen in the case of Job that happened Job had everything Job lost everything but then he gained it all back and more things that are written before time are written for our learning this is just a quick to the point I just wanted to say this because ultimately Whatever situation ultimately we face ourselves or we find ourselves faced with, we should at all times rejoice. And why do I say that? Because ultimately the Lord has given us the ability to see what's going to happen in the future to those that are against the scriptures, those that are against the will of the Lord, those that are against prophecy, those that are scoffers, scorners. The Lord's given us the ability to see what's going to happen to them. And so ultimately, man, like, um, you know, when you got someone that doesn't believe, should that trouble you? No, that shouldn't trouble you. Because the scripture said, what's the end for them? All the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness, their. So that doesn't really trouble, that shouldn't really trouble you because, but why do you rejoice? Because guess what? You're not unfaithful. You are faithful. And the fact that you're faithful comes by default with a number of woes that are going to be hurled your direction that you're going to have to duck and dive and sometimes you're going to have to take these hits sometimes you are going to slip up you are going to fall but you got to pick yourself back up and these trials and tribulations you know we're arming ourselves with the sufferings of Yahweh Shai we're partakers of the sufferings of Yahweh Shai that's why we rejoice because we're found worthy to suffer for his name's sake so let me read it again it says, whether a man be rich or poor, even the Apostle Paul said, I know both how to be a bound and a base. No matter what, it's the will of the Lord. So whether you're rich or poor, that's the will of the Lord. If you're poor, if you're dirt poor, you know, and, you know, I don't know, you, you're uptight financially. Guess what? It's the will of the Lord. Now, guess what? It's, it's up to whoever it may be, who the spirit or the Lord's got on to make a little bit more money in the congregation, the brotherhood, that, whatever. It's up to them now. It's their test to see what they're going to do if they see their brother in need. So on and so forth. We don't really worry about these things. Remember the scripture says the sparrow don't fall to the ground except the most high sanctions it. The sparrow, that's a very small bird. Okay. It says, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> wow. Satan, you know. Whether a man be rich or poor, if he have a good heart toward the Lord. <coughs> Satan always wants to get active when I do a video, you know. <laughs> so having a good heart toward the Lord is important. Um, remember the Hebrew word for heart is love, which is the mind. You know, and if your mind is constantly thinking about how to please the Lord. You know, then that should fill you with joy, man. Because ultimately, you've been given the gift of faith. All right? 
mixed with the word, you know what the Lord promised you if you endure unto the end, that you're going to be saved. And what comes with enduring unto the end? The, the word endure means to make hard. That means that you're going to be faced with woes. That means you're going to be faced with hardships. You know, and that's why, and if you understand the scriptures and you apply Luke, the sixth chapter, I believe it is, then you understand that it's really a blessing. All right. If you have a good heart toward the Lord, he shall at all times rejoice with a cheerful countenance. Let me go ahead and get that Luke since I quoted it. Luke chapter 6. Is it 6? Yes. All right. Luke 6 and 20. It says, And he lifted up his eyes upon his disciples, on his disciples, which the disciple is synonymous with what discipline? All right. So ultimately, we're supposed to be disciplinarians. We're disciplined, man. You know, we don't really... um. We don't really worry about, you know, we're like Stoics. Stoics tend to not worry about things that they can't control externally. And that's how we, you know, because ultimately it's all about the will of the Lord. So we have to be disciplined with that, mind, with that mindset, it says. And blessed, and he said, blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of Yahweh. you got people living it up right now, man. You know, people that are cheering on, you know, trannies. You know, at the Paris 2024, you know, Olympics and that and whatever. You've got people that are, that love to, to, to applaud these lewd, base acts. You've got real filthy, dirty demons out here that love committing adultery, that love eating abominable meats. You've got real low-life scumbags out here. And they think that they're rich. They think that they're doing it. But they're really poor in spirit. The Lord said, blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of Yahweh. Because guess what? Remember the parable of the poor rich man? Sorry, the poor wise man that saved the city? No one listened to him. You know, but through his wise words, guess what, man? You know, good came out of that. All right? And we're like the poor wise man. Ultimately, we don't aspire to be the next Denzel Washingtons or the next Jay-Z's or the next Kendrick Lamar's. We don't aspire to, because they sold their soul, man. They've received their consolation. People want to call us bums. They want to look down on us. Cool, do your thing. But ours is the kingdom of Yahweh. We're laying up our treasures in heaven, you know? See, we're sacrificing the immediate pleasures of the now for the infinite pleasures of the after, <laughs> you know? Colossians 3. Set your affections on the things above rather than the things of the earth. It says, blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. You know what that reminds me of? For ye shall be filled. Then with their mouths filled with laughter. Remember that scripture? This is uh, Psalms 126 verse 1. When the Lord Yahweh returned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. It's going to be like a dream, man. You know, what the, Lord, what the Lord's about to do to us, the scripture says, I have not seen nor ear heard the things that the Lord has prepared for them that love him. And what's love, biblically, right? For this is the love of the Most High, that you keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. So we're doing what the Lord told us to do, man. And that's why we should rejoice at all times. Because we're, as we rehearse the righteous acts, we, we're able to compare what we're doing with those that are not rehearsing the righteous acts. And we know what ultimately is going to be for their end. And so we have that evil villain smirk on us at all times because we know that when they get jacked up, remember the scripture says, I shall laugh at your calamity. I shall mock when your fear cometh. So when these guys get twisted up and bent out of shape and put in different scenarios that they can't get out of, unfavorable scenarios, that's when we're going to finally be able to laugh. It says, then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue was singing. And they said, and then said they among the heathen, the Lord have done great things for them. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right. So we're going to be, man, we're going to be good. Right now, we just got to go through what we're going through. So back in verse 21 in Luke 6, it says, Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, man. The Lord is about to wipe away tears from our eyes. The Lord is about to give us that rest. The scripture says, arise ye in the part, for this is not your rest. When the scriptures say arise ye in the part, that means you've got to literally get your head out of the gutter. Don't even invest mentally in, or spiritually at all in this place. Because we understand that the fashions of this world pass away. It's really futile. It's all vanity. It's pride. It's wickedness. It's death. It's disease. It's a body that's not, it's a mind that's not at ease. 
But with the scriptures, the scriptures comfort us. That's why we rejoice at all times. Because if this word is really in you, man, then you ultimately see the bigger picture. You know what's going to happen in the future. The Lord has opened us up to this great understanding, man. That's why we rejoice. We've got to be more grateful, man. And I'm thinking about things like this because it's easy to get caught up in your immediate worlds. Oh, look what's going on with me. And this. But then hold on a minute. But why are you going through these things? That's why. Then you understand why that you're a partaker of the sufferings of Yahweh Shai. Then a smile should come on your face, even though you're in pain. Even though you're suffering, but as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous, therefore, and repent. Don't the scriptures say that? Blessed are you that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are you when men shall hate you. And when they, you got a lot of people that hate us, bro, we're about to be dragged through the mud. Our names are about to be dragged through the mud. And that's the will of the Lord, too. That's what the Lord is. That's what the Lord requires for us, for our heads to be chopped off. If that's your lot, because some people are going to get this, some believers are going to get their heads chopped off for this word, man. Okay, that's how deep the hate is going to go. But what does the scripture say? Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. So even in the face of death, you know, worrying about economic woes and how this person feels about you, that person feels about you now. What about when your head gets lobbed off for the truth? Even in death, the Lord said, precious is the sight, in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. So even in death, we still rejoice because the dead in Yahweh Shai shall rise first. We know the answers, you know? Blessed are ye when men shall hate you and when they shall separate you from their company. And why do they do these things? Why do they separate themselves? And furthermore, you're supposed to want to be separate from them. The scripture says, can two walk together except they be agreed? So the separation is a must. You hear? They want to separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the son of man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. Boom. But woe unto you that are rich, for you have received your consolation. So you see, you see the difference. Here comes the blessings, those that are poor, those that are downtrodden, those that are weeping now, those that are hungering now, when those that are hating on you. That's cool. That's good. That's a blessing. But woe, woe means destruction unto you that are rich, that want to make it in this world, that want to be the next Denzel's, Jay-Z's, uh, Den uh, 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 Kendrick Lamar's, uh, Kanye West's and all that. You want to be, you want that now. You want that instant gratification, glorification. You want to be adored by demons. Go ahead, man. But you see, as for me and my house, we shall serve Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Where as we lay up our treasures in heaven, man. So the scripture says, rejoice in that day. And that's why I read this scripture, man. This scripture is deep, man. Sirach 26 and 4. Whether a man be rich or poor, if he have a good heart toward the Lord, he shall at all times rejoice with a cheerful countenance. Why? Because we understand the bigger picture. We know what's going on, man. We know what's going to happen to the unbelievers. We know what's going to happen to the believers. We know what's going to happen to the elect. You can't tell me that the... See, we're, we're rejoicing in advance at the vision of being saved. That's why we're rejoicing, man. Because we have hope of being saved by Yahweh Shai. And we have hope to see the downfall of our enemies. And that's one of the things that make the Lord to be happy. For a man to have joy of his children and to see the downfall of your enemies, man. The scripture says... Seeing it is a righteous thing with the most side to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. So that's, 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 that's payback. Payback is a bitch. But for the elect, man, that's the, we rejoice in the thought of it. We relish in that. Like an evil villain that smiles when he's destroying a planet. <laughs> anyway, look, man, with that, hey, we've got to get our head out of the, um, that woe is me, man, and just keep going, you know. And I speak for myself first. Because, you know, I don't know brothers are going through some things. But guess what? It's a necessary path when you're serving the Lord sincerely. These things are going to happen. And it's really a blessing. Yeah, how I said it. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you. So with that message, I hope you're uplifted. And I hope you keep moving. And I hope you keep fighting. And I say that for myself first and foremost too. Lord willing, I keep fighting a good fight of faith. Because many more woes are going to come. Economic, physical, you know, uh, psychological woes. All of that. Demons messing with you, all of that. Don't worry, man. Rejoice at all times. Whether you're rich and poor. But if you have a good heart toward the Lord, if your mind is, is you know what? 
Yeah, perfect. Perfect. I just remembered. Sirach 39 and 1. He, but he that giveth his mind to the Lord and Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecies. And what's the prophecy for those that don't believe? <laughs> what's the prophecy? What is, what's within the prophecies for those that don't believe? What's going to happen to the unbelievers? All the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. All right. So this is about being occupied, you know, in the meditational things or the things above. This word, occupied in prophecies, giving your mind to the Lord and Most High, man. All right. And we, we, we sincerely rejoice in that. So with that, man, I pray this was uplifting. Shalom to the hopeful elect.